Uh, we're going through the papers today in the company of the deputy leader of the Reclaim Party, that's Martin Dobney, and political consultant Emma Burnell. Very good to see both of you. Morning. Very good. Emma, we're beginning with you and, and Lord uh, Winston, who we just interviewed an hour ago on the programme. And this was a, um, an incident he had. Um, his wife took ill and uh, she subsequently died. Uh, he phoned 999. What was his experience like? Unfortunately, it was not a good experience. Um, and he's made the point that these calls can be heard not just by the person panicking whose loved one is in significant distress, but also by that distressed loved one. Um, Lord Winston happens to be an incredibly well-respected doctor, so absolutely knows how to um, deal with somebody and was, was in fact interrupted in giving his wife a cardiac massage by a litany of questions from the call handler. Um, it's not this individual call handler's fault, but, but it seems that there was a very poor training um, he was not trained to ask the right questions, not trained to minimise those questions and not trained to do the kind of things that are needed. And it, it, it feels to me like a symptom of a much broader problem with um, people on the front line um, being expected to do all sorts of, of very, very difficult jobs. I wouldn't want to be a no, no call goodness. handler. And, and in no way am I saying that this individual was at all to blame, but not being given the proper tools, um, whether that's physical tools or you know, training, uh, to do the jobs that we need them to be able mm -hmm. to do. Terribly sad. Um, and as you say, tragic, because he, he did lose his wife in all of this. Um, and yeah, we wish him all the best. And as I say, he's just been on our programme this yeah. morning. Uh, really interesting with his views on Roe versus Wade as well. Uh, Martin, you want to talk about woke education. This is inside The Sun today, page four. Uh, and this is something Nadim Zahawi has decided to tackle. Yeah, so the education secretary yesterday um, spoke out in Commons. This is a huge victory for common sense because a great many parents are, are rightly concerned about what their children as young as four are being taught in classrooms around gender ideology, over-sexualised education in the curriculum. This is something we made a documentary about the Reclaim Party called Groomed. That went out last week, and I think maybe um, Nadim Zoe uh, has watched it, because we precisely call for this. The right for parents to know what their children are being taught should be fundamental and a human right. Instead, schools are often very resistant to let out what they're being told. And the fact of the matter is, activists have invaded our classrooms. Um, corporations like Stonewall and others are actively lobbying curriculums to be changed, to be more trans-leaning, and they're doing that with taxpayers' money. We're hearing stories of 13-year-olds transitioning without their parents' knowledge, having been encouraged into this via their school. How do they get to do this? Do they do this under the radar yes. of the Department of Education? So, so the way it can work, Eamon, is, is that, for example, in Brighton, Brighton um, employed an external charity called All Sorts to advise it on its trans inclusion toolkit, which got around the central... Department of Education's yes, yeah. policy. So in a, in a sense, they have a breakaway curriculum which is being looked at as a nationwide rollout and parents have every night right to know what their children are being taught. We are seeing huge amounts of, of children um, identifying as non-binary. It seems to be something um, that, is, that is catching. It's a mindset that's, that's fashionable and carries on. But when it goes to the point where we are prescribing drugs, um, hormones to change puberty, or even going down the route of surgery, it's time for a full, transparent investigation. I think this is a great move. And also, while they're at it yesterday, Kemi Badenoch, the Equalities Minister, said we can have... Um, we need to make sure we have different gender toilets, particularly in schools, but not at the expense of women's toilets. We must keep women safe. I wonder, though, as a parent, I, mean, I think we've got at least one child around the same age, roughly. Have you got a primary school age kid still? Yeah, yeah, I have. I mean, have you noticed that there is a reluctance from parents to ever speak out against some of these things? Yes. Whether it's on race and, and, and you know, they might now be told what their children are being taught, but whether or not they'll do anything about it, I, I wonder whether parents will have the um, desire to go against sort of what they perceive to be public opinion. Well, there's, you are right. People are, are terrified of being called transphobic or, or racist. racist. These, yeah. these, are, these are the original sins. There is a... There is a High Court review at the moment in Wales uh, where a parent has taken the Welsh Government to court demanding that sex education is not made compulsory down to age four. They're teaching graphic content to children as young as four. It must stop. And this is about parent power. It's keeping children safe and it's not exposing them to a dangerous, toxic mindset. Mm. OK. Interesting. Anything you'd like to add there, Emma? I mean, I think 
This is more of a minefield than it might feel like at times. Um, I think there are real issues with um, some of the ideological teaching, whether you agree or disagree with it, it should be taught as this is what some people think, this is what other yeah. people think. On the other hand, um, I grew up in an era where there was um, real controversies about teaching basic biology. I think basic biology is really, really important. I think young children should know um, a, how children are made. But at what age? Well, I, I think there are ways that you can do and do this. I mean, I had, a, I had a book before I went to school called How Babies Are Made. It was perfectly age appropriate. It didn't encourage me to have sex. Mm. It encouraged me to understand how my body worked. Mm. And actually, a lot of um, children's charities will say understanding biology mm. is actually part of the first part of safeguarding. Mm. So what I worry about is throwing out the baby with the bathwater, if you'll forgive the, uh, the terrible mm. pun, um, and making sure that we are educating children in a way that is ideologically neutral mm. And that doesn't yes. mean being anti-trans or pro-trans or anti-feminist or pro-feminist. It means simply saying there are some things that are ideas that are contested and there are some things that are facts that are not. Yeah. No. And it's really important, um, for example, that we don't go down the idea of, of say, for example, evangelical parents no. being able to take um, their children out of schools because they believe in creationism, because that's ideology okay. rather than fact. Mm -hmm. Well... I went to all boys schools, right? And when I was 14, we got this very fancy pack for our science. 14. 14. <laughs> Did you know nothing about the birds and the bees before then? Just about 10. You had right, a, we had with the Nuffield <laughs> science pack, right? Which was very good. It came in a plastic Perspex cover and there were like six modules inside it. It wasn't like a book. It was just, it was amazing, incredible. But anyway, so then what happened is that the school came around when we were supplied in the office with our Nuffield science packs. Uh, section 3 was on biology, and Section 3 had to be taken out. We took out Section 3 because there was a picture of a naked man and a naked woman yeah. in it, and that was going to uh, pervert us. So oh, really? It had when to be... did you get taught sex ed? Because I was eight. I've never been taught sex. <laughs> <I've never> been... <laughs> I don't know anything Hence about the it. the four children. <laughs> <laughs> when I find out what's causing those, and what has caused those, <laughs> do something about it. Right, uh, the House of Lords. Uh, this is in The Guardian. Guardian, page 7. Labour wants to replace the Lords with what's termed a Senate of the Nations. Uh, yeah, this was a part of a speech um, given by Anna Sawa, who is the Scottish Labour leader, um, to the Fabian Society yesterday. Um, full disclosure, I do some work with the Fabians. Um, uh, and he announced an idea that instead of the um, unelected House of Lords, yeah. there'd be a more representative elected Senate of the Nations um, that has a similar sort of um, role as the House of Lords, but is much more representative of the people of the country. Um, and I think it's a really, really interesting idea. Obviously, we have been discussing um, changing that constitutional arrangement since, well, since I've been mm. in politics, which is a really blooming long time. Um, but I'd really like to see some, uh, some actual advance made. What tends to happen is that this um, falls apart because we have 17 different ideas and 15 different people arguing over them. Well, also, there's a lot of money involved as well. There's a lot of money involved. There's, there's vested interests. Um, and the status quo wins because while we all decide that we want change, we can't decide what change looks like. Much like the NHS, many would argue. One of those things that we all agree probably needs major reform, but nobody quite brave enough to, to tackle it head on.